This current challenge is in Python. It's called nested list. I've already solved it, and the instructions say, given the names and grades for each student in a class, we need to store the names and the grades in a nested list. Actually, what I mean here is that we need to create a 2D array and then add the names of the students and their scores. So um, if you continue to read the instructions, they say that we need to print the names of the students having the second lowest grade. So there are many students in the class. It's possible that many of them will have the second lowest grade. So let's look at some examples here. We have the number five, meaning that the input here is five students. We have the name of the students followed by the score of the students. So Harry got 37.21, same thing as Barry. Then Tina got 37.2. So Tina actually here got the lowest score and Harry and Barry got the second lowest score. So this is what we need to print when we uh, follow the instructions. We have Akriti here got 41, which is the highest score. And then we got Harsh with 39, which is the second highest score. We're only interested in the second lowest score, which is 37.21. So for this example, the outputs will need to look like this. We'll need to print Barry and Harry. But there is one important detail that we need to consider, and is that when there are multiple students with the second lowest score, just like, just like what we see here, we need to print the names in alphabetical order. So although Harry comes first in the input, the name Harry begins with an H compared to the name Barry, which begins with a B. So we need to print Barry first, and then we print Harry. So you can go through the instructions again. Um, I believe when you begin this challenge, you only have this first line, if name equals main. And then I think you also have this for loop and then you have these input lines, meaning that at every iteration, we'll get some inputs for the name and the score. The name is gonna be a string and the score is going to be a floating point number. So this is what they have here. And the input is handled directly by HackerRank when you run your test cases. I've entered the editor here and I've added a variable. This is an array. I'm calling it students and I'm gonna convert it into a 2D array because I'm going to append to it other smaller arrays or in Python, you can call them lists. So we get the name and the score and I add these details to a new small list that is name and score right here and I append it to my students array or my students list. Now I can sort this list so that all the content in my list is going to be sorted by the scores, first of all, and then secondly, by the names of the students. So by the time I'm done, my list is going to be updated so that the highest scores are at the end of my list and the lowest scores are at the beginning of my list. So it will be sorted in ascending order in terms of the scores and the names of the students are gonna be sorted alphabetically, meaning that whenever the scores are duplicated, the entries in my list, my 2D matrix, are gonna be sorted by the alphabetical names of the students. Basically here I'm saying sort the matrix by the score first and then by the names. So um, if you look again at how they have it, you see that the names come before the scores of the students. So basically I'm saying use the score first and then use the names for every student inside of this matrix. So once we've sorted the, the 2D array, we can just um, try to find the second lowest value inside of that list. So first I have my lowest is gonna be equal to my second lowest because I don't know yet what is the second lowest value. So at first I'm initializing both of them to the same value. And the value that I assign to them when I'm creating them is the lowest value inside of my list or the lowest score, I should say. So because this is already sorted in this line, whatever is at index zero, that is the first students inside of the sorted list, we're going to use that student score to initialize both these variables. 
Once we've done that, we need to track when we find the second lowest value. That is the value that is not the same as this one, but it should not be higher than that because otherwise it means that we are now looking at the third lowest and the fourth lowest and so on. We're only interested in the second lowest value here. So we need to specify or we need to get some sort of tracker to understand when we find that second lowest value. And when we, once we do that, I can change this value to one, meaning that I've updated this variable. So I count it as one. The moment I find the third lowest value, which I'm not actually interested in, I'm going to update this as two, meaning I've made another value update. And this is the second one. And I can use that to control my logic so that I stop searching for other scores. Now we're going to use I and size for my loop here below. And this is going to loop from the beginning of the sorted list up until the end. So, so long as we've not reached the ends, then we're going to check first of all, if the score is greater than our second lowest value here. At first, like I said, it's the first score in the list, which is the lowest score because the list is sorted now. So once we've found that we update it, then we count it as one value updates. Of course, once we've made that value update, so long as the second lowest variable here, this value has not changed. It means that there are actually duplicates in the list. So, so long as our value update is still set to one, we're going to print the names of the students who have that second lowest score in the list. And we're going to keep printing that. So this will only print once we found the second lowest value, the correct one, because it's only once we found it, that value updates changes from zero here to one. So, so long as it's one and it's not zero and it's not two or whatever, then we're going to print the names of the students right here. And here the logic is that if lowest and second lowest are not the same, meaning that the lowest value is still the correct lowest value from here, from the beginning, and second lowest value has now been updated through this part of the code, and the value update is greater than one, meaning that we've now moved past the correct second lowest value, and we are now at the third lowest value, then we're no longer interested in continuing this while loop, at which point we just break. And that's it for the entire logic. So first let's run the uh, sample test case, which is going to be the same as what they have here. We have passed this test case. So let's submit this code. We have 10 test cases in all, and we've passed all of them. So I encourage you guys to pause this video. I'm going to try eventually in the future to move everything to GitHub. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section and I'll get back to you. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more coding videos.